today, a missionary said, what is the gospel? How does it begin and end? And, and uh, you know, I was jumping out of my seat. He goes, okay, preacher, tell us all power has been given unto me in heaven and earth. Go therefore. And it ends, and I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. It begins and ends with Jesus. It's all about King Jesus. Turn with me, if you would, in your Bibles to 1 John chapter 2, verse 29 through 3, 3. As you're turning there, let me tell you, a couple years back I was in need of a new cell phone, and so uh, this wasn't as long ago as people pumped gas for you, but there was a little more service in that day. It was a few years back, and uh, because they actually used to take your cell phone and transfer all the data over for you. Now you go there and they say, off with you now, let your granddaughter do that for you. Uh, next. Uh, no, no, you go online. You know, I don't do that for you anymore. Anyhow, I was getting a new cell phone a few years back. And, you know, I was redeeming the time, so I thought I witnessed to the little girl uh, as she was being so kind, um, showing me different options. And so I, I turned the conversation toward the things of the Lord and began to tell her, uh, you know, about Jesus a little bit. And uh, she said, oh, that, oh, that, yeah, I'm covered, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, I have a church. And I said, oh, well, good. And she said, man, it's powerful. It begins with a light show, and the music is just rocking, and our preacher is so hip. He's like the coolest dude in town. And here's the wonderful thing. You don't have to be different to be a Christian. Uh, our pastor is just like us. You don't have to be different. Hmm. Fuses were tripping in my brain. Uh, this is a new gospel I haven't heard about. The one I've heard about says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, a brand spanking new creation. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. That if any man be in Christ, he has translated us out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of light, into the, into the kingdom of the son of his love. Colossians 1, 13 and 14. In whom we have redemption. What does that mean? Bought back. Bought back from what? The slave market of sin. Uh, there is a king in this world whose name is not Jesus. He's actually the prince of the world. His name is Satan. But it, it's, it's uh, you know, when Jesus stood before Pilate, you know, Pilate said, don't you know who I am? Don't you know I have power over you? And Jesus said, you can have no power over me unless it were given to you. Of God, this is your hour. This is the power of darkness. My, but my kingdom's not of this world. But he is the king of kings, and he is the Lord of lords. And if you are in him, baby, you are different, or you are not in him. It's, it's hideous to say that you can be in Christ and not be different. Stand with me to honor God. 1 John 2, 9. And, and may I say this, the pastor of that, an associate pastor of that church was there yesterday morning, and I'm so grateful to this, and I'm just going to tell it like it is. And he said, we were wrong. We had members by the hundreds upon the hundreds upon the hundreds, and the pandemic, they're gone, and apparently a lot of them aren't coming back. We did not focus on discipleship. And I was so grateful to hear that confession, and may God give fruit to their ministry going forward, and may they focus on the true gospel, which is always transformative. Jesus didn't die just to inform you. He died to transform you. So uh, 1 John 2, 29, if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness, here it is, is born of him. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God. Therefore, the world does not know us because it did not know him. See the, see this, see the light and darkness right there? I mean, Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth, you're the light of the world, and you know, don't be freaked out if the world hates you, it hated me first. Don't marvel if the world doesn't invite you to their... There are parties that, you know, uh, you're different. You're called to be in the world, but not of it. Verse 2. Behold, look here now, see. Now we are the children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And, and we'll drill down a little bit on that, and then mainly on this. And everyone who has this hope in him, that is hope in Jesus, capital H-I-M, purifies himself, that is, uh, man, woman, boy, girl, if your hope is in the King of kings, the Lord of lords, 
you will be busy cooperating with God in your sanctification. You will be, this is a verb form there, purifies, you're, you're cooperating with God, and that root word there is holiness. Uh, you will practice being holy uh, yourself just as he is pure. He is holy. Oh, Father, thank you for your word. Bless it. And Lord, may it preach today for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated, dear ones. You might be a king's kid, we said uh, last week, if you practice righteousness. We started to delve into this concept that you might be a king's kid if you practice separation. The word wasn't quite in the text, but the doctrine, the concept is all over the text. Dear ones, we've been called out of the world, and that's why the apostle of love says, you know, the world didn't know him. Don't be shocked that the world doesn't recognize God's kids. The world didn't even recognize God. He was in the world, no, the world was made by him. The world knew him not, John 1 tells us. And so there's always going to be a clash between the Christian and the non-Christian. The Bible says that, you know, when, man's, when a man's ways please the Lord, when a woman's ways please the Lord, he causeth even your enemies to be at peace with you. But you're never going to be the life of anyone's party that's in the world if you're in Christ. Because uh, oil and water do not mix. You can put them together. Science teachers do that for us when we're kids. And they shake up a jar. But the oil goes back to being oil, and the water goes back to being water. And light and darkness can't dwell side by side. In fact, turn with me if you would. I don't do this very often. Usually I just quote the scripture for you or read it for you. But you know, keep your finger in 1 John and, and turn with me over to 2 Corinthians uh, and, and I just want to read to you something from uh, chapter 6 of 2 Corinthians, and it is this concept that Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer for us, that is his, his heavenly high priestly prayer for us in John 17. Father, I do not pray that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil, or the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And he said, uh, but Lord, I'm sending him into the world because we have to preach Christ. You have to go to... Malaysia. You have to go to the Philippines. You have to go to Cambodia. You have to go to Africa. He didn't say, uh, all power has been given unto me. Stay therefore. He said, go therefore. Um, but dear ones, we're, but we're not to be of the world. So look with me at 2 Corinthians chapter 6. And I just want to read to you. And this was to the carnal church. Remember we did a series in this, uh, you know, it was called uh, Correcting Unsaintly Saints. We've heard this, don't be unequally yoked. We always think that re reminds us, you know, it talks about marriage. It does talk about marriage, but it talks about a whole lot more. Do not be unequally yoked. That is just like two animals that are hooked together to pull a plow. Don't be yoked together as believers with unbelievers. For what fellowship, what communion, that's that word koinonia, it's not coffee and donuts, it's, it's partnership with the gospel. What fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness, what communion hath light with darkness, and what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? As a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, your best friend should not be an unbeliever. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Your best friend should not be an unbeliever. You should have a mission field, which includes unbelievers. <laughs> but you will never be deep in soulmate partners with anyone who's not in Christ. I didn't say unfriend them, friend them, so you can tell them about Jesus, just like I wanted to tell the little sales girl about Jesus. What accord has Christ with God? What part is a believer with an unbeliever? Or what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as he has said, I will dwell in them, I will walk among them, I will be their God, and they will be my people. And this is when the Lord was giving us all the laws of Leviticus, which all pointed us to Christ and said, may the camp you know, stay holy, the Lord your God dwells among you. And then here it is at verse 17, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Do not touch the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. The doctrine of the Christian the doctrine of God is that from the Old Testament and the New is that, you know, Leviticus, be ye holy, you know, even as I have called you out of Egypt, you know, I am calling you out of the world, be ye holy for I am holy, saith the Lord. That's Leviticus 11.45, it's 
1 Peter 1, 15 and 16. The, the apostle of Christ Peter quotes that. Matthew 2, 15 says, Out of Egypt I have called my son. And what was that all about? Well, when Jesus was a little baby, Herod wanted to kill this king of the Jews, and he started killing off babies, and God sent them into Egypt. But, but dear ones, I want to tell you, for, for a little while, for protection, I want to tell you God calls all of his children out of Egypt. In fact, at 21 years of age, when the Lord really got a hold of me, and I realized you could be on active duty and stand for Christ. And, and the Lord, one night, got a hold of me, and the next morning, man, I, did, I put on my service dress blues, and I went to work, and I said, I want you to meet the new Michael Schwamm. I've given my life to Christ. And some people are like, woo, he's gone off the deep end. But I wanted to be clear here and now. There's a change. God has gotten a hold of me, and I can't keep walking in darkness and call myself a child of light. And so, dear ones, why is this important? Glad you asked. <laughs> Cults had invaded the church. You know, the church is supposed to invade the culture. You know, we, we gather here for, for like an hour or two. We come back for a while. We memorize. We gather for ladies' Bible studies. Remember? And then what do we do? We go out into the darkness. And even as Christ in the incarnation pierced the darkness, we go out of the darkness to pierce that darkness out there. I'm not going to your work center. I'm not going to be around your, your co-workers. I'm not going to be around your neighbors. I'm not going to be around your Aunt Sally. Uh, you are. And so God wants us to invade the darkness with the light of Christ. But here's the thing. In John's day, the darkness had invaded them. They were believing the Gnostics. Oh, we've got this special revelation. You know, there's a difference between spiritual things and, and matter. Matter is evil, including your body. Just go for it. Don't resist evil. Just live licentiously. Just do whatever you want to do. Don't worry about it. Is that from God? Yeah, go like this. No, that is not from God. And Docetics were teaching that. Serenthus you know, was teaching that you know, Jesus wasn't really God the Son. It just appeared that the Holy Spirit came on him when he was baptized, that it left him before he died, and he died just like you and I, just a man, just uh, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, put him in the... No, 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 no. We, we've got to stand up against such uh, ridiculous teaching. And so John is telling us, look, we're not home yet. We don't know we're all going to what all we're going to be you do not know the details of heaven i do not know the details of heaven i do i will tell you this we would do well to focus more on heaven and what's coming it might help us not to focus on this earth I, i've told this story before and it, it wasn't in my notes to tell it today but uh, uh i'm going to share it right now that uh, i was asked years ago to minister a little boy who was dying of muscular dysphy he had a chip in his shoulder a mile wide he was angry at god He's, he was 21. He lived beyond his expected lifestyle uh, longevity already it, with, with muscular dysphy. He said, I'm not going to throw a ball. I'm not going to get married. I, I don't want to hear about your God. Uh, that's a short story. I visited him weekly for about a year. And he lived in a really, really bad place. I mean, I, I would tell you, when I got home, I would strip my clothes off because I had roaches and bugs in me. And, you know, and I felt sorry for that kid that lived there in that squalor day in day out i didn't know anything else to do so i just started telling him about heaven because he rejected but he wanted me to keep coming back you know one of those things that someone really doesn't receive you but then they say but but i'll see you next week uh, i told him i don't think i'm making a difference with him I, I don't think i need to keep coming back he, oh you're making a difference last week when you read to him from revelation about heaven all he's talked about all week long mom do you know if i go to heaven i'm going to be walking on streets that are actually made of pure gold and, and you know the rest of the story, right? So we, don't, we do need to focus that this isn't it. I mean, go ahead, get educated. Get that next ring. Get that next ribbon. Go for it. Do it. Get that house. Uh, ask that girl to marry you. Go forward and live. Don't, no one asks you to cave it out until Jesus comes. But just realize this is not all we get, man. It's going to be so much better. It is not yet known what we are going to be, but we know that when he appears, we will be like him. We will see him in his full orb glory. And guess what? We're going to be like him. That is too good to even fully grasp. You were one day, if, if people saw you now in your glorified state, they would drop down like the uh, apostles did before angels. And, and the angels would say, get up, get up, get up, get up. I'm just a man. But uh, as C.S. Lewis said, we're walking amongst the immortals. And so, dear ones, uh, 
we got to rush on. I want to say, look at verse 3. Everyone who has this hope. And what is this hope? I've just been telling you about it. And the kids at the uh, Fellowship Christian Academy, here's what they're learning. Now, faith is the what? The substance of things hoped for. It's the what? Evidence of things we don't even see yet. So what does this word hope mean? It means a confident expectation. It is not like wishful thinking hope. No, 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 no. It's man, we got it. He, we are his. And, and here's the thing. If you're God's kid, he's never, ever going to let you go. If you have this hope that you are a child of the most high God, <laughs> you're in his family. You're in his forever family. You know, Daniel and Amanda and, and Samson, they're, they're going to go to Texas, but they're part of the center view forever family. If they call, I will answer. I got a little text message from our, our, our newest granddaughter, Evelyn, and she was running around in her, in her diaper and being a pistol. Uh, it's Sunday night in Malaysia. I'm busy. I'm, I'm getting ready to come to church, but I took a few minutes to answer that text because why? She is in my forever family. That's my grandbaby. I always got time for her. And guess what? God, if, if you are in God's family, you're in his forever family, and your hope is not wishful thinking. It's a confident expectation. Without faith, it's impossible. Please, God, he that believeth, uh, God must believe that he is, first of all, and that he's a reward of those who diligently seek him. It's, 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 it's confidence. It's not wishful thinking. It's, it's an expectation. I know my anchor is in him. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. And, and Fanny Crosby said, this is my story. I'm sticking with it. This is my song. <laughs> Praising my Savior all the day long. It's not wishful thinking. And here's what the Bible is saying. If this hope is in you, if, if this hope is your hope, that word purify, it's from the root word uh, in the Greek language, from the word which we get our word holy. It's the word hagios. It's not important that you know that. The first time around, it's a verb form. If you have this hope in you, you should be, here it is, purifying yourself. Now, you know that it's not you purifying yourself, but how do you participate in this thing? Well, we get a little hint from Paul when he wrote to Titus. The grace of God that brings salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us, here's how you, here's how you, here's how you purify yourself, denying ungodliness, denying worldly lusts, Live soberly, righteously, godly in this present age. Head lifted up, looking for that glorious hope and the blessed appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And what did he do? He gave himself for us to redeem us from all iniquity. And here it is, purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. So you don't just sit on the log singing blessed assurance. You open your Bible. You study it. You discover who you now are in Christ. You pray. You come to the table like the Lord's Supper. You participate in the spiritual disciplines. Uh, disciplines. Everyone who has this confident expectation, expectation in Jesus, you get busy cooperating with God and purifying your life. He does the actual purifying. You just do the yielding. Even, here's how that verse ends, even as he, Christ, is pure. Back to uh, 1 John 3, 3. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself even as Jesus is pure. Dear ones, this is to uh, be the norm of the Christian life. You are to practice personal holiness. Danny Aiken said this, that our, our practice is the proof of our parentage. I shared with you last week a little illustration about uh, Tiger Woods' boy Charlie looking just like his daddy. Aiken went on to say this, the righteous Savior, dear ones, here's who he produces, righteous children. Now, don't get all goofed up about missteps. I never, no one has ever told you, just accept Jesus, and you're going to be perfect henceforth. That is a fallacy. But accept Jesus, truly submit to Jesus as Lord and Savior, truly get saved, and you will now start a process of sinning less and less and less as you become more and more like Jesus. Will there be missteps? Yes. Will there, could, could there even be big missteps? The truth is, yes. I've actually read the Bible. Have you? There's some, there's some great men of God who have done some really embarrassing things. 
that it's right there. Why is God allowed it to be there? To show us there's only one hero. There's only sinless one. It's, it's the Son of Man. But if you're his kid, the normative practice of your life is to be a bent toward holiness. Uh, Aiken went on to say this, and he was my seminary president. Why, why do I share sometimes what, uh, what others say? Because, you know, they're learned men. We learned this past week there are some learned men who deceived us. Ravi Zacharias is, is among them. It's heartbreaking. I was just looking at a book that he wrote in my office, and, and, and I haven't canned it yet, I'm debating, but uh, you know what the title of the book is? Deliver Us From Evil. How to Keep Our Souls in an Impure World. And I'm like, ooh, Ravi, you, you let us down there, bro. You, you, you didn't exactly do that. But the normative thing is being pure even as he is pure. Danny Aiken said, realizing that now we are the children of God, We'll, and will be so forever, it's very important that you understand this, the, the, the permanence of salvation. God's got you, and he's not letting you go. I, I wish I could just give you a, a Dr. Spock mind melt and, and just infuse that into your brain. If you've truly been saved, don't you think the same God that saved you can keep you? He can and he will. But he went on to say this, but knowing this brings a beautiful balance and self-awareness. I am who I am by God's gracious adoption and regeneration. That is, I am a Christian because God's adopted me. That's it, period. You know, he, he adopted me into his family. We, we adopted Julie. She didn't go to court. She didn't fill out no paperwork. We did all, we, you know, uh, we're adopted by God. He, he did all the paperwork. He did all the blood work. He let his son bleed out on the cross that we could be regenerated. And that fosters humility. I am who I am as God's child. That fosters security. It fosters certainty. And I agree with it. And, 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 and may I just say it's all based in the gospel. And I'll say, well, Pastor Mike, what is that? Oh, so glad you asked. This Jesus we're talking about, he actually created you. you know, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. He, he, he got Adam and Eve together and performed that little ceremony. And he, in, in Matthew, he quoted that ceremony. Man shall leave his father and mother. And he added this word to it. Therefore, what God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. He, he was there when Adam and Eve rebelled, and he knows that you have rebelled against him. And just as Adam and Eve rebelled and they hid from God in their nakedness, you uh, are undone before God. Woe is me, Isaiah said, I'm undone. You are undone. The calamity in Eden has invaded and infected every last human being. We are born in sin. I love babies. You know, No one can say I don't love babies, but you go in the nursery and find the newest, cutest, gooey, gaga, beautiful new baby, and it's a sinner. I'm not going to say viper in a diaper, but, you know, uh, they're sinners in need of a Savior. Yeah, they are. You don't teach them how to be polite, and they won't be polite. You don't teach them how not to bite, they will bite. Uh, <laughs> but God loves you. He loved Adam and Eve. He, he showed them Eve in the garden. There's a covering. I'm going to kill some animals, and some blood's going to be shed, but I'm going to cover you. It was all appointing that when Jesus came, he's the Lamb of God who, who takes away the sin of the world. He's the only cure, but he's available to everyone. I got a little thing going on with my other heart. I'm seeing a doctor, but I'm so glad I've seen the real heart, heart doctor. And, 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 and the Bible says the heart is deceitful, is desperately wicked. Who can know it? And God is the God who, who the prophet Ezekiel said, I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to take away that stony heart, and I'm going to give you a heart of flesh, a heart after my heart. So Jesus loved you, Jesus died for you, Jesus rose again for you, Jesus is right now praying for you, Father, uh, this is Michael coming through. He's on the line. He's, he's, in, he's coming to you through my blood. Bring him in. Because uh, through him we have access into this grace wherein we now stand, Romans 5, 2. And, and this one is coming back for us. This, this is the gospel. This is not all we get. And so we've got to move on and do the Lord's Supper. Let me just say this. You've heard enough of the gospel. If you're here today and you're not saved, then I've I got to believe there's at least someone here today uh, who, who does not yet know Christ, whom to know is life eternal. Again, church family, I tell you this, no matter what you've done, someone's written a book against it. I was at a meeting one time with a bunch of pastors who were talking about, we don't believe in the effectiveness of the sinner's prayer, and I just always have to ask a question. How, how many of you were at camp, BBS, you know, <laughs> some Christian experience, you heard the gospel, and, and someone led you in prayer. All those guys that didn't believe in it, guess what? Their hands kind of went sheepishly up. So here's what I'm saying. My words won't save you, but if from your heart you pray a prayer, something like this, Dear Heavenly Father, 
I know that you love me unconditionally. I thank you for loving me. I thank you for sending your son, the Lord Jesus, who, who is fully one of us, a human, and yet fully you, dear God. And, and he lived for me, and he died for me, and he was crucified for me, and he rose again the third day. And as best as I know how, dear God, I, I believe that. I, I want to trust you. I repent of my sin. And, and dear ones, you know, repentance is just, it's just an about face. As God reaches you around, takes you by the little head, and, and you used to be pointing toward evil, doing your own thing. He breaks your heart, convicts you of your sin, and he spins you around. The Bible says his goodness leads us unto repentance. And you cry out, God, I don't want to keep going that way. I don't want to keep breaking your heart. I now trust you. I submit to you. I bow before you. God, save me. I believe this gospel message. Save me. And Jesus said, whoever comes to me, I will in no wise cast out. And then you can pray, Father, from this moment forward, help me to live for thee. And you can say, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. And if you pray to prayer like that, let me tell you what, dear ones, this is a hill on which I'm willing to die. You are a child of God, and you forever will be. But it can't be my prayer, it has to be your prayer. God sees your heart. The sinner, uh, uh, the thief next to the cross on Jesus, uh, at Jesus' side, he, he didn't have uh, any pastor lead him in anything, but he cried out, I am a sinner, I'm getting what I deserve. But this man, Lord, will you remember me? You must turn, you must believe. Father, have your way in this invitation moment, all for the glory of King Jesus. Amen. Let's stand, let's sing one stanza. We have some Christian counselors here who will break off and pray with you right now because that's the most important thing in your life. If you're ready to get saved, you come forward right now and say, I want Jesus.